Well, Finley really was the um, the voice that that drew me into Ink and Bone. It's usually one or a couple of major voices that brings me into the narrative of my of the book that I'm working on. And um, Finley is, you know, I kind of think of her sort of as my my wild child. She's like 20 years old, and she has a gift, a psychic gift that she wishes she could basically just return. Um, she doesn't want to um, be what she is, and so she. And unfortunately, it's been this way for her sort of all her life. She, um, you know, she's been seeing things that other people can't see since she was a kid, and it's something that really upsets her mother. So it's something that she's kind of been wrestling with and fighting against. And she's finally reached a point where you know all the things that she's doing to avoid who she is you know, all the kind of destructive behaviors, like they've reached critical mass. And um, she has to return to um, the town where her mother grew up, the Hollows, to move in with her grandmother, Eloise Montgomery, who is a renowned psychic. And, you know, Finley thinks she's going to live with her grandmother and sort of, you know, leisurely find her way into how she wants to use her abilities but instead, her return to the hollows becomes a kind of a baptism by fire as she winds up getting drawn into the investigation of a missing girl. And her story, as well as the story of um, uh, Mary Gleason, the mother of the missing girl, and Eloise as well, um, their stories all sort of intertwine and um, unfold as the, as the story progresses in Ink and Bone. Well, it's been kind of a twisty road to Finley. Um, really, um, the, I can, and I can kind of take it back, like sort of even many, many years. A long time ago, I worked with, um, I was working in book publishing, and I had the opportunity to work on a book written by a, a man named John Edwards, who is a, mm, um, a psychic who, who speaks to the dead. And I was just, you know, I was young in publishing, and I was just an assistant on the project, but you know, he was just this incredibly powerful man, and he ha did these readings for people that I knew that were, like, just kind of other, you know, they were otherworldly. Like, he was clearly tapped into something, you know, some other plane of existence. And, um, but also, he was just this really lovely guy. He was just, like, you know, he could have been anybody. He could have been, like, your cousin from Long Island, you know. And, um, you know, just hanging out with him was just, you know, it was just pleasant to be with him. And he had just like a, a warmth to him. And it was like, you know, it was the dichotomy of that personality that really stayed and stayed with me. And it's in general, it's kind of like these dichotomies that interest me. You know, it's like the narrow place between those things, that dark place. I kind of always like want to shimmy myself in and go, you know, what's in there? And, um, you know, so that was really the germ for Eloise Montgomery, Finley's grandmother. And then when Eloise turned up at the end of Fragile, um, which published in 2010, I was just like, oh, you know, a psychic. That's interesting. You know, even if even yeah. if she's a fraud, it's still interesting. But then she had this really tiny role right. to play in Fragile. And so I became like sort of semi-obsessed with her. And she then she got her own book. And she kept, you know, popping up in other books. And she kept having a role to play in these other stories. And then um, I was able to really develop her in an e-original novella called The Whispering Hollows. And um, it was in the within those three stories that I really started to get to know Finley. Um, she had a big role to play in, the, in, in that novella, which is really like a novella in three parts. And originally it was published as shorts, but it really does belong in one, in okay. one package. But it was there that I got to know Finley. And the questions I had about her from those short stories um, inspired me to write Ink and Bone. 